A few weeks ago, I set out to find a used snowblower and I wanted to find something in the $300 to $500 price range. Do some repairs on it and flip it right here on the channel. Ballers gotta get paid. It's a 24 inch Craftsman, but is this 10 year old machine better than any new snowblower? Let's find out. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. And before we get rolling, if you're feeling the vibe and you wanna be part of the tribe, subscribe. All right, Garage Gear gang, let's dive right in here. This Craftsman is just over 10 years old, and this thing is cleaner than a nun's vocabulary. There is absolutely no rust or faded paint anywhere on this machine. When I went to go buy this blower, the owner specifically said to bring my own gas because he said that he stores it empty. That's a great sign. He said, if you want to see it run, you got to bring your own gas. When I arrived at the owner's house, I went to go ring the doorbell and there was actually one of those key lock boxes on the door. That's a sign that he's moving. And he's probably looking to get rid of this thing pretty quick. And when he opened up his garage, everything in his garage was spotless. Everything was super clean, shiny. His cars were a little older, but they were in great shape. Clearly, this is a man that takes care of all of his stuff. This guy and I, I think we'd actually become good friends. The owner's name was Remzi, and I asked him why he sells. It. And he said, well, I'm moving to Florida. Last I checked, it don't snow down there. So then I got right to business, put some gas in it, and started it right up. And as I was looking inside the tank, I could not believe how clean and shiny it was before I put the gas inside. It was pretty much then that I realized this machine had very few hours on it. This thing started up right away with no hesitation. I even had Remzi hold the auger lever down so I could watch the auger spin and make sure everything was working fine. Everything was working good in here, so I ran it up and down the driveway in every gear. It dialed in every gear just fine, and this machine just wants to go. It literally flew through every gear. Then I went ahead and checked the oil on this machine and it was crystal clear. I was really starting to wonder, did the guy even use this thing? I then tried out the electric start here and the funny thing was that he said he actually never used it. Started right up just fine with it. And look at this engine. It doesn't even have a scratch on it. It's in perfectly good shape. And again, it makes you wonder, did he even use it enough? My guess is no, it is so immaculately clean. And in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just spraying a rust yeah. preventative on here and I'm going over every square inch. Even before spraying this thing down with a rust preventative, there wasn't even a speck of dust on this thing. And check this out. He linked the key to the throttle lever. He actually drilled a hole and then put a zip tie through here and then linked them together. That way you could could never lose the key. That's brilliant. Brilliant! He even hung the extra key up here on the handlebars. And look at this, he triple zip tied it. I mean, this guy really took some steps here with this thing. Now, when I was there, I told him I wanted to take a look underneath this cover here and look at the belts. So let me show you this. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Cover comes off. There we go. And then once again, after taking the cover off here, I was shocked. Usually under a belt cover, as these belts wear, you get this black dust and it usually gets on the metal all around. There's a little bit here, but that's nothing. Even over here on this side, very little. This whole thing is clean. The belts look terrific. They're in great shape. I do need to tighten the belts up a little bit. This tensioner is set really low. And right below this video is that like now button. I'm and if you wouldn't now. mind taking a super quick second to hit it, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Not a hard job. All you gotta do is simply adjust this tensioner forward a little bit. This tensioner is set here all the way at the bottom. This should make the snowblower throw a little bit further and help it get through those big piles of snow. That is a lot tighter now. That's gonna throw way better. And cover her back up. So then I asked Remzi, how often did you use this thing? He said that he only used it for really heavy snowfalls. He had a massive shovel, like six feet wide, not even joking. He said he would use the wide shovel more and then only use this when we got dumped on with snow. Six foot wide shovel, hmm? Well, that got me thinking. He even said that he had some kind of cover here that would cover the engine every time he used it. Crazy, I know. Hey, there's people out there that like to protect their engines and then there's people like me out there that like to chuck snow across the street and into their neighbor's driveway. To each his own. This was the big thing that really stood out to me. He built his own skids. He custom built these because he said the other ones just wore down too fast. That's pretty impressive. He CNC machined these out of some super durable plastic and these will take forever to wear down. That is pretty cool. These here are the originals and check these babies out. They are so worn down so he clearly used this machine. You can see just look at that edge and then look at the top side. He definitely put some hours on this but these are a very soft plastic. In fact look at I 
and flex it. I can understand why he would want to make something more durable. He did give me the owner's manual and he ran inside to get this out of a thick binder full of outdoor manuals that he holds. There's not even a wrinkle to a page. I think I'm the first to open this thing. And here's the electric star cord. Look at this. This, I believe, is the original twisty tie. I don't even think he's unwound this thing. This looks brand spanking new. This guy Remzi, let me tell you. Now there's another thing I wanted to show you and it's back inside by the impeller housing. Take a look at this. He has actually touched up any rust areas with black spray paint. You can see little spritz of it here on the gearbox, some of it down here on the inside of the tube. There is one little wear spot. That's nothing. It's still shiny metal and that clearly means that he's been rust coating this thing or spraying a preventative in here to really hold back the rust. Back here you can see some little painted spots. There is no rust to be found in here. For the level of care that that man gave this machine, that overspray is no big deal. Now speaking of deal, getting a deal was impossible on this thing. This exact model now goes for over $1,000 in big box stores. The way I saw it, I was getting a brand new snowblower for less than half the price. He wanted $450 for it. Still in my price range of $300 to $500, but I don't like paying full price. I reached in my back pocket, tried offering him $400, and he immediately shook his head no. You have to give him credit, the guy knew what he had. Other than a belt tightening, there was nothing physical wrong with the machine. I had no issues to argue the price with. Everything was perfect on this thing. I went 410. I said 425. He then stopped me and said, here, look. On his phone, he had six messages from other potential buyers, and I was number one. He basically said, if you don't buy this now for $450, I'm calling the next person from Niagara Falls. Bruh. Well, I guess that's that. Handed him $450. There was no winning this round. Now I bought this machine to flip, as I usually do with a machine or two around this time of the year right before winter hits. Turns out a good friend of mine just bought a house and he needs one. So I said, hey, I got a great one for you. I lubed everything up, I tightened the belts, I rust proof the whole thing, and then I even got underneath in the belly pan, checked the axles and gears, lubed everything up, He's good to go. Made a few bucks on it, but at that point, he's basically just paying me to check it over and make sure that everything is up to par on it. My friend has an average four car driveway, a little bit smaller than mine, but it's perfect for this machine. Now I gave my friend a deal on it just to move it on out. Now if he didn't want it, what I would do is wait till the first big snowfall event on the weather forecast and immediately put this on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and ramp the price up. Probably in the six, 650 range. Somebody would come and get it. Now some people out there might be saying, eh, Craftsman sucks, and I get it, but you know what? I'm a fan of all tools. Some I favor more than others. Look at that girl just shining in the sun. I'm personally not a huge fan of Craftsman and MTD related products. They've definitely cut corners in terms of quality over the years, and Craftsman is definitely not the made in America company that it used to be. Going back about 10 years ago, these might have still been made here in the USA. If anybody out there can confirm that, please let me know down below in the comments. Nowadays, many of these things are made overseas. I still see really old Craftsman snowblowers out there just still cranking away, and I think that those are awesome. Now, if you are a brand new homeowner and you don't have the time, money, or knowledge to fix one of these machines, then this machine is an absolute freaking bargain. Everything is like new on it. The paint is immaculate. It needs nothing. And if properly taken care of, this machine will last a very, very long time. Click or tap the screen right here for more cool garage gear videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.